Good day, good day, good day to you. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Seminars with Millennia Who Talks, episode number 12. We are changing lives, inspiring others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. Today, we're here with Rodney A. Stinson from the Motor City, Detroit, yes. Michigan. And uh, man, let's just get right into it, Rodney. Let's you know tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Obviously, we, I, I took the cat out of the bag to say where you're from, but- your, what year did you start in the business? How old were you started? And what kind of prompted you to get into real estate? Let's start there. Okay, so I got my first license in Michigan in 2004. And um, how I got started in the business is my brother's a licensed builder. And um, it's crazy because he was buying about 10 to 20 properties a month. And we never saw the agent. The agent, would, he, we would just call and say, hey, we're out front of this house. And the guy would give us the code. We go in and write up the offer. I had no idea that that was not right, right? So fast forward, I enroll in the real estate class. I'm taking the 40 hours. And they're like, yeah, you have to be there at every single showing. Like, no, yeah, that doesn't work for me, right? So took a minute off um, about four years after I got, three to four years after I got my license before I actually started doing real estate. And once I did it, I can't get enough of it. So initially it was an agent was providing zero service and you thought like, Oh, this is how it is. And he's getting a, getting, you know, his fee for service every single time. And your brother, you, you told me this offline, but how many houses was your brother buying at the time? He, he was buying about 10 to 20 houses a month and a I month. was with, a month and I um, was with, and I was with him at every single showing. And then to find out this guy is getting, uh, tw- it was a, a 1250 at the time per per uh, per list action, and um, he was buying 10 to 10 to 20 a month. I was like, wait a minute, that's that's crazy. I'm here anyway, right? I might as well get the license, get to you know, and, and go ahead and make the money. But in the middle, in the midst of the class, I figured out that that wasn't it. And so you were like, ah, man, I, this is an easy street like I thought it was going to be. No, definitely not. Because I mean, if my brother's buying 10. 10 to 20 houses a month, that's 10 to 20 times I, you have to go out with that one person. And, and if you have multiple age, multiple clients, then you're, you're gone all the time. So that wasn't something I, I was up for at the beginning. How old were you then? I got my license at 21. 21 years old. So yes. Like, okay. Out there. That's good. Glad to hear that. So then what, what prompted you after four years later, you said, let me go into this and see what see what it's really about i actually um fast forward to the modern day of craigslist right and so i'm online and i was craigslist job hunting i had my license was active uh my license were in uh i had a uh they were holding right so i'm searching craigslist and i see a job says hey we um we guarantee you that we that you can make three to four hundred bucks a week right Okay, at the time, going from zero dollars to three to four hundred bucks a week seemed like like a big deal to me. So I worked. That was my first brokerage at Michigan Community Development. I stayed there for about uh, fourteen months, and then I Craigslist again saw another ad, and it's this time it says it's guaranteeing you five thousand dollars a week, five five thousand dollars a month income. Um, no, uh, five, within five minutes, all the properties were within five minutes of the office. Took that, went to that uh, interview, and never looked back. So, what was that like? What were you doing? Like more like a like a, a showing agent or like a licensed assistant at that point? What What was your? Doing? So my my first position, I worked as a licensed assistant, and um, you know, running all over the place. It's pretty much what I did. Um, It worked out. It was in Macomb County, which is a different area than where I'm from. So I got a chance to see a total different neighborhood um, and and property values and everything was totally different from me being from in the inner city. Well, and I think it's, it's, you know, we have newer agents watching this show who it's like, you know, where do I start? What's right for me? And sometimes, you know, maybe a licensed assistant is a good place to start because you learn the market, you learn the business, right? I would imagine you were learning from an experienced person and, and getting outside of your 
influence, if you were, the area that you're familiar with, right? Yeah. Learning new areas. Um, so what was the transition then? At what point did you say, you know what? I got to go the next step. I'm going up to oh. the next level. So brokerage. So I actually um, I actually felt bad about leaving my first broker because like I had no experience. I mean, three to four hundred bucks a week. And I wasn't really I, I wasn't really um, doing a lot of work because he had a, he had a, a, a well oiled machine. Right. So I just stepped in to fill the fill in the gaps. And so when it was time for me to go to the new the new broker the new brokerage with the five thousand uh, a month I felt really bad because I felt like he had put a lot of uh, gave put a lot of his time into me um, showed me the tools of the trade and I felt bad to actually um, making that departure but you know I, I thought about it like the only way that that you become a broker is to work and grow right and so fast forward. Um, I'm downtown, loving it, downtown Detroit. And then at one point, it was just, I felt like I had gone as much as I could go at, mm -hmm. at, with the company, right? Um, and so it, the next thing left, the only thing left was to do was to step out on my own. Very, very frightening. So how many years were you the, so were you your sales agent? So, so I was a sales agent. Um, from 04 into 2011, and then I got my, my broker's license at that time. So you were a sales agent during what some might say was a pretty challenging market in Detroit, Michigan? <sighs> to say the least. I mean, it was pro I don't want to say this, but it's, would, would you say that it was probably one of the worst real estate markets Detroit has ever seen, maybe the United States, depending on uh, opinions. So uh, definitely, um, definitely, definitely uh, was one of the worst real estate markets. I, I would say, period. Um, I'm licensed. I've been licensed in Michigan, Illinois, Florida and Georgia. And so I've seen really, really good markets. And I've and of course, Detroit, I've seen them really, really bad. Uh -huh. um, it's just. You just have to go with the flow, you know. You have to ch change markets, push harder, do more marketing um, to get those clients in now because the market is either, you're either going to get the five hundred dollar uh, buyers or you're going to get a um, hundred thousand dollar buyers, and then there, then there's everything in between. So, I mean, this is really this is going to be really good advice for new agents that are watching because it's like if you come into the business and the market is great, anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody ever take her at that point, right? It's like you're just writing paper left and right. But when that market turns, you know, what what did you do? Like, how did you survive in a, in a time where, like, the government is coming in to bail out the big employers in your area? The, I mean, there's people leaving by the tens of thousands. Like, what? How do you survive that, man? Like, tell us more. So... I, I honestly made the transition to downtown real estate. I'm not. I'm sure you guys are aware that Detroit, our downtown, is on fire right now. We have properties that are selling for nearly eight hundred dollars a square foot, yeah. um, and so our downtown is on fire. So I made the transition into the downtown market. So uh, that's Midtown, that's downtown, that's Corktown. I had to again go outside of the areas that I was familiar with and deal in a market where I was totally shocked, sticker shocked at the prices, right? I, I can remember um, when I made that transition, I only wanted to do leasing at first because everyone was moving in for their jobs. It was easier to do the lease. And I didn't necessarily, I was sticker shocked at the fact that the places are, were now selling at 100000 and 125 And I just couldn't bring it bring myself to tell someone hey leave that suburbs where you know the police is going to come if you call and the 911 is going to show up to come downtown where chances are it, it, they won't right and so <laughs> it, i mean just being honest it took me a, it took me a while to actually build up that confidence to actually go out and, and handle the sales and then i started doing 100,000 dollar plus sales and it was it was just transition an adjustment. And so then 
you were successful through the through the down market and at some point you said you know what it's time it's time for me to start my own open my own brokerage or was there something that prompted you is it something like you said you know what this is the last straw <laughs> You know, there's always a last straw, Jay, man. You know, I, well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're like, business is so good. Why do I keep giving? You know, I want to be my own boss totally. I mean, we all are our own boss, but it all depends on how your broker owner is and how much they micromanage you. Because that was something I changed from one broker to another because I had a manager that was on me all the time and I couldn't take it. You know, now, so I can honestly say that the brokerage I left to start my own brokerage. They were really, they've been, they they were, they were really supportive, right? Um, really, the, I mean, I, I even looking back, I can't even believe I actually left when I left because their phones rings, they're getting hundreds of phone calls per day, and there was only four, eight, three to four agents in the office. So it's like I'm going out, I'm showing you. If you want something, you do or you don't. It's on to the next. It wasn't a whole lot of follow up at the time, right? And so. <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't. I mean, it's right, right. our inventory was limited. There's a there's hundreds of employer, hundreds of people moving here for work. Um, time we just didn't have that, just didn't have that time to actually spend with the clients. Right. And so, um, I, I, I got out. I, I, I le- honestly can say I left out of frustration. Um, I actually have felt like I've been doing a whole lot for someone else's business. Um, and I felt like I can do this for myself. Now's the time. I had worked really hard. I had saved a, a ton of money and I, I, I felt that now was that time to make that transition. Little did I know it was a lot more than just <laughs> taking the, the extra hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of advice would you give to somebody who was thinking of making that move right now? Like, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking of opening my brokerage. What should I think about first? What kind of planning should I do? Why should I rethink what I'm going to do? So, so my, one of my main advices would be to make sure that you saved money because there's a ton of fees. Like I, I like, you know, I'm an associate broker at the company, right? It's the only thing I'm, I'm not writing checks. I'm just collecting them, right? I didn't have to worry about the lights being on, the E&O insurances, um, the desk, you know, equipment, paper, inks, all of that stuff, right? And so I thought it would just, you know, I'm making a transition. I'm going into business for myself, but I didn't think about all of the extra fees and costs that I would, in, that I would incur. Okay. So my advice would be to make sure that you have a solid budget in mind. You you do the research to find out if you're how much that E and O is going to cost if you're going to brick and mortar, factory and printing and ink and all of that stuff because you're making the contracts and unless you're doing everything digitally now, um, those fees can add up. So what you're saying is probably put together a business plan. <laughs> Definitely business plan and budget. Those are. The, business plan I mean, and an economic I, forecast with everything and, and, and I'll be honest with you trust and this is from someone who didn't have none of that I, I literally sent the email I quit next day I opened up my own brokerage okay and so I didn't I, I had to call around and get the E&O's I had to call and out call around about the liability insurances and um, and then you now you have the the, uh, the MLS. Now you have the MLS fees and you have the office MLS fees. So definitely a budget. Okay. Now at what point you, you also have a real estate school, correct? Yes. The real estate Academy of Detroit. Real estate Academy of Detroit. At what point did that, did you bring that into the mix? Did you feel like, you know what? I don't have enough to do <laughs> my own brokerage. Let me start a school too. Like, so, where did that come from? So that was in twenty. That was in 2016 when when that happened. Okay. Um, Recent, last year or so. So so I have a ton of certifications. Um, I'm like I said, I'm a licensed in Michigan, Illinois, and uh, Georgia. I have a licensed insurance adjuster. I'm a, an appraiser. So I have like a ton of licenses, right? And so I've sat in a ton of co- a ton of classes, and I, I know that real estate education actually. Uh, is the reason that I'm able to make six figures now. I honestly believe that, that the things that I've learned in the courses 
actually helped to get me to where I am. And so for me, um, I wanted to be able to give back to um, new agents who didn't uh, who didn't necessarily have that awesome broker to actually walk them through the process. And I, I often tell the students in the class that uh, pre-licensing teaches you to pass the exam. It doesn't teach you to sell real estate. And so if you don't get with a broker, a, a great broker, or if you're not uh, furthering your real estate education, then you, you only know what you learned in those books. And that act, that won't, that won't, help you at all. that won't help you. So that was 2016 and you do everything. Do you do, you don't do pre-licensing. I think we talked about that, right? It's mainly after licensing, CE, desi- all the designation courses and all that stuff. Yes. Um, I, I started out um, doing uh, pre-licensing, um, I, but I decided that that's, that that's not my passion, I guess. So I, I, <laughs> a great way to, I, I'll be honest. Like, put I, it. I, I, it's not my passion. So I, I decided that I will focus on courses that actually help build the, the agent up, like generating um, generating buyer and seller leads, uh, generation buy, ABR, those, those designation courses and certification courses, I believe are what, what the new agent needs to actually get them to that next level. Yeah. So if you're a new agent and you're watching this education led to six figures, all the designation courses are what's important. You only learn how to pass your, your exam and your pre-licensing. It's not, you know, and I feel for some of the agents that they started at a brokerage and it's not all brokerages, but they start and they go, here's your desk, here's your phone. Thanks so much. You're on your own. <laughs> go sell real estate, you know? And it's like, oh man. And there's, it's, it's good that you saw that, that there was a need in the market where you were and yeah. said, what if it's, if it's gotta be, it's up to me. And you started a school and you're, it's your way of giving back and helping out others. Right. Yeah. And, and then there's no real estate school. There's no school in the city of Detroit. So we do have two real estate schools in Michigan, but they're in the suburbs. So if you are a Detroit resident and you want to get some type of real estate training, you have to travel miles away to get it. So we're located right in the city. Um, come on down. <laughs> Check us out, you know. So I know we talked a little bit on or offline about how different it is. And this would be good for anybody who's in like a, a, a metro market like Detroit how different it is selling in that downtown market when it's hot because not all stuff gets listed. I mean, what, what kind of, what kind of strategies would you, would you suggest for somebody looking to sell in that market who, who at first can't find everything that's on the market, you know, and, and want to do what's best in the best interest of their clients? I think that, um, so I've, I've noticed that a lot of agents are starting to go back to the whole Craigslist marketing thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I was actually on it earlier today because I, I was searching and I'm like, I know there's something else out here. This, this can't be it, right? And so I went on Craigslist and, and Craigslist has those listings. So I would suggest that someone um, calls, checks Craigslist or maybe call one of the brokers that you see that, normally has a lot of listings maybe they maybe they're holding them as pocket listings so maybe the the dominant realtor or broker in that area give them a call and say hey i have a client do you have anything and that that generally works because they want to sell that property well let's let's call it an exclusive listing rather than a pocket Mm. listing because pocket listings would be illegal and i know there's nobody doing it Oh, exclusive list. Exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. Yeah. So in your market, do you, you, you know who the players are, right? So that, oh. I guess that's what you're saying. You know who the people are who, if they have one unit that's listed, there's probably more units, right? If it's like, like a condo type of situation. Yes. And what do you do? Just call and say, hey, I, had a, I have a buyer. What else do you have? Now, the good thing about me is that I, I've kind of, I've kind of, I, I mean, my reputation is really good. So now when people, and I, and I am, I have buyers, right? Right. So now when people get listings, exclusive listings, they call me and say, Hey, Rod, I have this, 
this coming up? Do you have anything? Do you have any buyer for it? Um, but yeah, definitely. I, I know know who the players are, and then, hey, I'll, I'll get on the phone and call and say, hey, I see that you have that one listing. Come on, what else do you have in the building? You know, <laughs> do you have anything else? Do you know anything coming? You know, uh, a lot of times the association, if it's a condo, that association will know um, what's coming, um, and they may have some even that they may have some that they their own condos, you know, that they're going to be listing shortly. So just check with the association. If you have a, a buyer that's looking for a specific, in a specific location, I would call that a condo association and find out if they have anything coming up or know of if, if any uh, owners who decided to list. So don't be afraid, make the calls, right? You yeah, don't be afraid. The only thing, the only thing you have to make is money, right? You know, they could say, <laughs> Yes, I have something. No, I don't. I mean, that's the only thing. The only thing that you stand to make is money. You can't. You don't lose anything because you don't have anything for your client anyway. And I gotta, I gotta put this up here. The only thing you stand to make is I put dollar signs because money is not enough. Dollar signs. Up there, right there. That's gonna be the quote of the day for Mister Rodney A. Stinson. Um, let's see here. So what's next? What's next for you? What's on the so, horizon? So I actually just made the transition from um, Glass House Realty Group, which is the brokerage I started, into EXP Realty. And so okay. it's I'm rolling in um, my Michigan, Illinois, and, Florida, and Georgia license for waiting on Florida to uh, be reinstated. I didn't take that post-education course. So right now I'm rolling in all of my licenses under to EXP. Uh, it just makes sense. It's more. It'll be more convenient. I can do uh, my bro- do deals in all four states under one brokerage. So that's where I'm. That's what I'm working on now. Okay. Currently, and I'm still, you know, doing. It, I'm an insurance adjuster, so I, <laughs> I'm doing the hurricane, finishing up the Hurricane Irma, Nate and Harvey claims. So, man, if you guys are watching this, you're a new agent or just an agent who's been around for a while, anybody watching this, I think Rodney's a great example. Like he makes money because he's always working, right? I mean, you're always, I always think that every day I'm hustling, right? It's like every day you're out, you're on the grind, you're getting stuff done. That's why it's been impossible to get him on, (laughs) on an interview here because he's got so many things going on. It's like, if something's falling short over here, at least you have this, you know, you have multiple streams of income. So I think that's that's I mean, that's great advice for anybody out there. You make money when you work hard. And I think that's as agents who start brand new, it's not always there's no shortcut to success. I oh, think, no. you know, it's, it's like. Uh, well, the secret is hard work and dedication is what I was. I have the secret formula, right? It's hard work and dedication. You're not an overnight success. You grind, no. You've been grinding it out for for years now. What well, what kind of advice? Besides what you've given, you know, if, if you were talking to Rodney from 2004, <laughs> it's say, uh, you know, you could sit down with him or even just a brand new agent. You're saying like, listen here, new agent, this is the Yoda of real estate now, Mr. You know, everything, <laughs> everything that you've learned over the years and, and, you know, working in a New York metro market, getting through I and mean, rising like a phoenix from the ashes is what I think about when I think about Detroit, because it was like, Everybody had written it off, right? Yeah, Everybody was yeah. like, Detroit's done. They're done. Everybody, you might as well just move out and find a new place to live. It's going to be a ghost town. Like, what kind of advice would you give to somebody? Uh, my, two things. Follow, follow your, like, although real estate wasn't my initial passion, I, once I got into it, it became my passion. And so I, my advice would be to fo- follow your passion, Right. Even against all odds, no matter what, no matter what it looks like around you, follow it, stick with it and talk to people, talk to more people, Um, let people know. um, Don't be a secret agent, as we say, Um, talk to more people, let people know about you, what you do, where you work, what areas you serve. Um, That's that's start more communicate start more conversations with strangers i know we were told don't talk to strangers but that's that's <laughs> that stranger could be your next buyer your next seller your next investor your next your next agent so talk to more people and i think not just 
non-real estate people, people, but also real estate people, agents, anybody in your market, you know, and, and I say this almost on every broadcast, but it's like anybody that we've interviewed or anybody that you meet that's a YPN or, or just anywhere, don't yeah. be afraid to talk to them. If you ask, say, look at, I'm having this challenge and, you know, what do you think about this? Can you help me? We're more than happy to help each other out. You know, I always say that the, the, the rising tide raises all boats. Yes. You know, it's definitely. like we're, we're, we're in competition, but we're also colleagues and we got to help each other out, to, you know, even if we're in different markets. So if you're thinking about Detroit, where else, what other markets are you in, Rodney? So I'm in Detroit, I am in Chicago, and I'm in Atlanta. Two, and then I'll be in Miami. In <laughs> or small markets. Pretty <laughs> small, pretty small. <laughs> so if you ever, you know, he's, a, he's a, the go-to guy. Anything you want to say in closing? Just uh, last real estate quote of wisdom. What's what's like a, a daily live by quote for you? Um, it's uh, do more, be better. Ah, oh, dude, I love that. Put this up. Do more, be better. I say something similar to my son. I tell him, "Don't be good, be great." Oh, but definitely. Do more, be better. Do more, be better. We're going to end off on that. So uh, for those of you who've been watching the whole time or if you're, you're just tuning in here towards the end, what I want you to do is if you want to be alerted for future broadcasts, all you have to do is comment below, below this video, Millenni Who. I have a messenger bot that will contact you and say, okay, you know, if you want to subscribe, if you want to subscribe to just these broadcasts, I am not going to spam you with anything else. I'm not sending you a free report. I'm not saying sign up for this class. None of that. I will only let you know when we have these Millennial Who Talks because, you know, just like Rodney said earlier, this is all about giving back, inspire stories of real estate rock stars like Rodney. You know, thanks for tuning in. Rodney, again, thanks so much for taking the time in your day. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks and, for having me. Uh, happy New Year, man, if I don't see you before then. Th thanks to you too. Thank you. Have a good day.